their customers. In our case, it's those morning rush people on their way to work, grabbing a donut and coffee on the way into the office. I just knew if I could reach those poor souls going to Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts every day and get them to try my shop instead, they'd never go back to the big chains. The trick is finding out who my competitors' customers were and a good way to reach them. And this problem isn't unique, because in business, the easiest way to grow is to find the consumers who are already buying your type of product and just convert them to your store. This universal business need has given rise to data brokers, companies that follow consumers like us around the internet with cookies, pull public records, and track our social media interaction, all to build a consumer profile, a picture of who we are, what we like, and what we're likely to buy. They then take these profiles and sell them to companies as small as my donut shop and as large as the likes of Walmart and Target. I sold these for $2 billion last year. They made a lot of money doing this, and it's a fair model, but in my experience, I found some problems, and entrepreneurs love solving problems. So here they are. Namely, with data brokers, it's great to know what a consumer likes on Facebook and what they've been tweeting about, but as a business owner, what I really want to know is what consumers have been buying. Yet, data brokers can't get to this information because it's protected by banks. Credit card and debit card transactions are behind those firewalls and they can't get to them. Secondly, when I buy or rent a list of consumer leads, that's all it is, it's the list. It's up to me as a business owner to find the best way to reach these consumers, whether that's taking out a Facebook ad, Google ad, or even running a whole direct mail campaign. This can be expensive and costly no matter what size of business you're running. And finally, there are serious ethical questions with this. Consumers are asking questions about how their data is being harvested, collected, and applied. These questions are starting to make businesses uncomfortable, I was uncomfortable, about using some of these types of services. This past May, the Federal Trade Commission issued a report titled Data Brokers, a call for accountability and transparency. The information that so far has been rather cheap or easy to obtain may not be available much longer. And it makes sense, really. Because, as consumers, our data is being harvested and sold for $2 billion, and all we have to show for it is more promotional emails in our inbox. I set up to change this by involving consumers directly in this transaction. I built FairShare as a way for consumers to share their transactions directly with me. In return, they get targeted deals and exceptional offers from retailers. Retailers who have long wanted to target based on transaction data, but have never had the ability to do so. They're willing to go the extra mile for this opportunity, they've just never had a way, until now. Using the technology that we've built and implemented, consumers can link any debit or credit card into our service. We then pull all of their transactions, and these transactions power our data algorithm that pairs them with exceptional offers. So, I'll set up an example to illustrate this for you. Here we have Stan, the home improvement enthusiast. Stan spends $1,000 a month at Lowe's buying materials and tools for his projects around his house and yard. Stan is the lifeblood of the home improvement industry because he's a regular customer spending a high dollar amount. Home Depot wants more stands, but they don't, they don't know where to find guys like Stan. So through Fairshare, they can run a campaign saying, anyone who spends regularly above a certain dollar amount, we want to offer them a $100 gift card. Stan qualifies for this and has this gift card pushed directly to his phone. He's ecstatic because he's never received an offer like this from anywhere. And Home Depot is happy to make this deal because they know what they're getting in return. $100 in store credit is a small price to pay for a vetted $12,000 a year consumer. But the power of the data doesn't just stop with thresholds. Because transaction information includes where a transaction took place, we can target based on location. So say we have a new Chick-fil-A franchise opening up and they want to drive traffic to their new location. Through Fairshare, they could push free meals to anyone who regularly buys lunch within a certain distance of their new store. This means that Chick-fil-A can reach the consumers who are already spending money on their type of product where they are. And the consumer who was going to spend $12 next door at Chipotle on a burrito now gets a free meal. Chicken sandwich, waffle fries, and drink, and they're happy. It's this mutual alignment of interest that makes for mutually beneficial outcomes and makes Fairshare a unique solution. Because with Fairshare, companies get to target based on what really matters, transaction data. It's lead generation and delivery all in one. Companies don't have to mess with finding the best way to reach consumers. They're already engaged and ready to act on offers they're receiving. And finally, we've solved the ethical quandary of data brokers by making consumers a direct beneficiaries of their own data. They're no longer the victim, but rather the hero of the scenario. In the same way that consumers today ask questions about 
where their product they buy has been sourced, they're going to start asking questions about the data behind the marketing they're receiving. This is a growing trend, a trend we're excited to be moving quickly with. We began development on day one of the ARC and are happy to announce we have over 100 financial accounts linked. We're currently testing in three different retailers, getting that all-important customer feedback and finding ways to get proof points to take this to a larger scale. Speaking of that scale, the $150,000 is at stake today. We put towards hiring our two top-notch developers on full-time, allowing us to fix bugs, implement feedback, and iterate quickly, giving us the capacity to aggressively focus on user and retailer acquisition. Um, this traction and the, the, size and I, the size behind this idea is exciting, but what has been getting me up every morning is the fundamentals of the idea, that we're saving businesses time and money while empowering consumers. If you have a, a data or retail background, I'd love to talk to you at my table and talk about how we may be able to uh, pursue these ideals together. This demo day is the end of the art challenge for us, but the beginning of a new chapter of work. And I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and getting to it. I'm Abaku with Fair Data. Thank you again.